All right. Well, um, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for join, joining me. Um, welcome to the January 2022 virtual field trip to West Creek Reservation. My name is Michelle Brocious. I am your bird walk leader this evening. I am a WCAS board member and field trip co-coordinator. A little bit about this program for those of you who may not have joined us before. Every month I designate a location um, to visit. Participants have from the first of the month to the last of the month to make a trip individually or with a friend um, to the location to enjoy everything that location has to offer the birds the animals the plant life take photographs if that's your thing journal about your experience keep a bird list or a species list and send any of your items to me um, by the end of the month um, and then i compile all, all those items into this uh, presentation that i'm going to share tonight for discussion and you don't need to have gone to the location to attend the virtual meetup um, this is just, you know, you can just enjoy the experiences and photos of others, and then, of course, we can have a discussion at the end. All right, right before we dive in to, um, to West Creek Reservation, we visited Euclid Creek Reservation last month, and we had a mystery goal. I had a mystery goal. Um, I had tried to figure out what it was. I put it on um, the What's This Bird Facebook group and uh, got three different IDs back. So it decided after the call to put it on North American Goals Facebook group. And um, Chuck came to my rescue. He is really good with goals. And he said that he would go with herring, uh, perhaps advanced second cycle. So that's the winning ID. I was actually thinking third winter herring, but the bill didn't seem quite right as it doesn't have much of a pale tip showing. Therefore, advanced second cycle makes sense to me. So thank you, Chuck. And I have updated my eber checklist to add a herring goal to the visit. So that is the winning ID. And Nancy, I believe that's also what you said. So congrats. Oh. Uh, yes, what you a did. lucky guess. Yes. <laughs> you said that you would go with herring. So, all right. So, West Creek Reservation. While neighborhoods surrounding most of the Nine Mile West Creek are densely developed, this 326 acre reservation preserves a valley of rocky gorges, forest draped hillsides, floodplains, and babbling brooks. The West Creek watershed has influent settlement and development patterns for two centuries. Remnants of abandoned quarries and the comfortable homes of quarry owners can still be found in the watershed today, which drains the cities of Parma, Seven Hills, Brooklyn Heights, Independence, and portions of North Royalton and Broadview Heights before emptying into the Cuyahoga River. West Creek Reservation invites the cyclist, hiker, picnicker, and bird watcher to a varied upland and wetland landscape. Nesting birds include red-tailed hawks, wood ducks, and screech owls, and migratory species such as American red star, indigo bunting, Lincoln sparrow, and great crested flycatcher can be found there as well. We were not looking for nesting birds in January, but that's what you can find there in the spring. All right, perhaps the most exciting aspect of West Creek Reservation is the discovery of new urban watershed stewardship techniques. The developed and restored natural areas of the reservation are a living laboratory supplying data and demonstrating real world, real world solutions for stormwater and pollution control. And that whole um, description there is taken from the Cleveland Metro Parks website, West Creek Reservation page. And then I've included a picture of um, the Jewel Wing Loop Trail at West Creek Reservation. All right, so we had two target species that um, I designated for us to try and look for while at the reservation. The first hawks, um, so potential hawk sightings during the month of January in Northeast Ohio could include Northern Harrier, Sharp Shin, Coopers, Rough Legged, Red shouldered and red tailed. In fact, an eBird user recorded a Northern Harrier sighting at West Creek Reservation on January 1st. I was really excited. And I don't know if it was there or if it was just a flyover. It just was, you know, I just saw the, the recorded observation. That would have been great to see, um, but I had no such luck on my visit. All right, hawks are generally divided into three major groups, um, buteos, or I'm pronouncing that wrong, buteos, accipiters, and harriers. Buteos, include red-tailed, red-shouldered, and rough-legged hawks. They are large, chunky hawks with broad wings and short tails. They are the soaring hawks that can soar for hours with hardly a wing flap. 
Occipiters include coopers and sharp shin hawks. They are slim hawks with short rounded wings and long tails. They tend to fly using several quick wing beats uh, followed by a glide, though they have been known to soar on occasion. Harriers include the Northern Harrier. They have long wings and a long tail. They characteristically hunt flying low to the ground, gliding on up tilted wings. So there's a picture of a red tailed hawk on the right hand side there that I took at West Creek Reservation during one of my visits. But Eastern Bluebird was the other identified species um, to look for. So most of the country drives during an Eastern North American summer will turn up a few Eastern Bluebirds sitting on telephone wires or perched atop a nest box, calling out in, sh in a short wavering voice or abruptly dropping to the ground after an insect. Marvelous birds to capture in your binoculars. Male Eastern Bluebirds are a brilliant royal blue on the back and head and warm red brown on the breast. Blue tinges in the wings and tail give the grayer females an elegant look. And that is uh, the description by the Cornell Lab of Ornithology uh, found on their Eastern Bluebird page. Uh, range maps published in several field guides place the Eastern Bluebird as only a summer visitor of Northern Ohio. However, I have observed them in Ohio year round since I started birding in 2017 and data collected by eBird supports the story. Uh, bluebirds will stay here for the winter as long as they have a reliable food source. Insects are a bluebird's primary diet, but they will also eat fruit and berries during the winter. And there I included um, below the text, um, uh, illustrated checklist of an Easter bluebird sightings at West Creek Reservation. And Nancy, I thought it was really cool that um, right at the bottom, you could see your name. You were the last one to have sighted. <laughs> the bluebird at West Creek. Uh, so on January 21st. So that was cool that your name was there. At least um, you're the last one um, when I took that screenshot over the weekend. And then a picture of an Eastern bluebird at West Creek Reservation by Sean Missig. Beautiful, bright male, it looks like. Michelle, right, so could I ask? Yeah, yes. Can I ask a question? Sure. So do they have any nest boxes up at? Uh... They do, they do have, I didn't count how many, but they have a field with, um, with, with bluebird boxes. And I am looking forward to going back in the spring to see the bluebirds there and maybe some tree swallows and other grassland birds. Okay. I mean, it's always nice to know if somebody is monitoring the boxes. So these, so the, this property is owned and managed by the Cleveland Metro Park. So I, okay. I'm assuming so. Um, I would think definitely so. Look into that. Yeah. Yeah. And they have the boxes paired too. So again, they're following some, some good protocols as far as, you know, keeping, trying to keep, you know, house sparrows down and <clears throat> you know, allowing tree swallows and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm not, That's sure good. Who, I'm not sure who volunteers there or if it's the staff there that, that take care of them. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Nothing worse than a nest box that's not tended to and it's pumping out house sparrows. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Okay. All right. Thank you for that question. All right. So uh, first uh, is my visit. So I visited the reservation twice. I made my first visit to West Creek Reservation on January 22nd. It was a chilly, feels like two degrees Fahrenheit upon arrival at 9.54 a.m. at the Watershed Stewardship Center. I used to cross-country ski at this park over a decade ago when there was practically nothing there. I remember the park being closed for a while for renovations, but in that time I had moved further away and the closure didn't really impact me. I was amazed at how the place has changed. An all-purpose trail, picnic shelters, a nature center. None of this was here before. I remember one loose gravel parking lot off the road and a dirt path around some cellular towers. So as I started on the all-purpose trail, the first birds sighted were house sparrows. I stopped here to snap some photos as I wasn't sure if I would find any other birds in these cold temps. The house sparrows were certainly doing their best to fluff up their feathers for warmth. There seemed to be a trail around the pond at Monarch Bluffs picnic area. At least others had forged a path through the foot or so of snow that had fallen the week prior. I decided to walk it and did see an unidentified hawk flying in the distance. When I came back around to the all-purpose trail, I ran into a maintenance worker who gave me a tip of bird feeders near the nature center. I made a note to check those out before leaving. So I took a picture there on the right of a house sparrow at West Creek. And then two more pictures of, I believe, two different individual house sparrows at West Creek Reservation. Again, fluffing out their feathers, 
trying to stay warm. Right, as I continued as I continued along the all-purpose trail, I noticed a snow-covered field to my left with some bluebird boxes. There you go, Darlene. I will definitely have to check out this field again in the spring. I'm sure it is alive with eastern bluebirds, tree swallows, and other grassland birds. Suddenly, I saw a red-tailed hawk fly across the trail into the trees. I was so happy to find one of my target species so quickly. The hawk perched on a nearby tree for several minutes. In the meantime, I was distracted by a blue jay who was sounding an alarm claw as blue jays do. The hawk took off south toward grass, uh, Grassroots Gorge Overlook and I wondered if I would be lucky enough to relocate it. I tracked it over to the, <clears throat> excuse me, I tracked it over to the gorge and noticed a peculiar sign, mountain bike trail. The sign said not to walk on the mountain bike trail when wet and there was snow everywhere. So I didn't go any further than the bridge. However, I didn't need to go beyond the bridge because perched right there was the hawk. So this picture I took on the left was when um, the hawk initially flew across the trail and landed um, right before the bluebird distracted me. So I took some pictures of the hawk. That's the one that came out. Um, next page, this is the blue jay um, that was sounding the alarm call. And then here are um, two pictures of the hawk at the, the bridge when I, when I relocated it after it flew away. All right, I assume I soon came to the Jewel Wing Loop Trail, which was more rugged than the all-purpose trail and only navigable because others had forged their way through the snow. On the Woodland Trail, I heard black-capped chickadees calling their sweet whistle and saw tufted titmice high in the trees. I was rounding a bend in the trail when I saw a flock of what looked like 10 or 20 large birds rush and rise together from the forest floor. I wondered what they were and tried to creep closer for a better look. I say tried because my boots were crunching on the crisp snow and I was wearing snow pants that go swish swish with every movement. Therefore, I did my best cowboy walk as I approached the birds and saw they were morning doves. In all, I counted 20 individual birds. I also saw a red-bellied woodpecker and a curious fox squirrel before exiting the Jilling Loop Trail. So there on the left, a picture of five of the morning doves um, at West Creek Reservation. And two more pictures of the morning doves. And they look so pretty just sitting there in the sunshine. It was cold, but it was a nice sunny day. And then the red bellied woodpecker on the left um, with a wonderful red belly. You know, sometimes their bellies are really pale, but I, I need to show this picture to my husband because he doesn't think it should be called a red belly because the only one he's ever seen is the one that comes to my feeder and it's got like the palest belly. So I have to show him that picture. And then the curious uh, fox squirrel on the right hand side. All right, I was crossing the Quarry Creek Bridge on my way back to the Watershed Stewardship Center when I decided to take a look over the side at the creek. You can oftentimes find birds around water sources and this creek still had some unfrozen areas. It wasn't easy to get to the railing as a snowplow had pushed a wall of snow against it, but I managed to climb on top of the mound and didn't sink too far down. Uh, there was a flock of American goldfinch clinging to and feeding from golden plants and grasses that were protruding from the snow. Goldfinch almost exclusively feed on seeds. Uh, there were also about five more morning doves, both resting in an overgrown bush, as well as on the frozen parts of the creek. You know, there was a, a couple more just sitting on the ice. It's not, not where I would have sat, but I'm not a bird. All right, as I continued to walk along the all-purpose trail back to the nature center, I happened to notice more and more goldfinch, beautiful golden birds shining brightly from the white snow. So I have on the left a picture of an American goldfinch uh, eating the seeds on that plant at West Creek Reservation. And then two more pictures. I believe that's the same individual as on the last page. I tracked this one for a while. And then these are different now. This is farther along down the trail. And that one on the right really is curious about me taking its photo. I believe this is the last page of Goldfinch that I'm going to show you. I really try to narrow it down for this presentation. <laughs> they were very plentiful. 
All right, lastly, I checked out the feeders at the Nature Center. Here I saw house sparrow, house finch, black capped chickadee, dark eyed junco, and white breasted nuthatch. I noticed that a rosy male house finch was sporting some bling on his right leg. A banding and tagging does not hurt birds if done properly with the right equipment and does not interfere with their daily activities. Bird banding is also very important for scientific research and helps inform decisions regarding wildlife management and conservation efforts. We can understand a variety of things from banding, including bird dispersal and migration, behavior and social structure, lifespan and survival rate, and reproductive success and population growth. It takes just a few minutes it's to report a ban once you've edited your photos. In the US, report the ban to the Bird Banding Laboratory at www.reportban.gov. I also caught a female house finch eating a bud off a tree. House finches eat mostly plant materials such as seeds, buds, and fruits. So there on the right is the picture of the male house finch with his yellow band on his right leg. Now his left leg is tucked up and you can't see if there's anything on there. And I did note that in my report, I'll, like I, I took a few different pictures of this bird and his left leg was obscured every time. So I just had the yellow band to report. But so here are two pictures of a black cap chickadee. That's the same individual. You could see um, it grabbed a, a nut or a seed that it's eating right there and it, it brought it it brought it from the feeder to the the tree and is uh, devouring it female house finch at west creek reservation and then here she is uh, biting that bud off the tree as the, the feeder was right there but she decided to eat that bud a uh, dark eyed junco at West Creek Reservation. All right, I made my second visit to West Creek Reservation on January 29th. The temps were a little colder than my previous visit at a feels like negative one degree Fahrenheit upon arrival at 9.35 a.m. I parked at the Watershed Stewardship Center again and took the same route through the reservation as my previous visit. On this visit, I spotted a brilliant red Northern card I wonder where they all went. I only counted three my entire visit. I got some good looks at a white breasted nut hatch that came. It says my internet connection is unstable. Can you all hear me and see my screen? Um, it went out a couple times. Okay, and, but I'm back. Uh, your voice, and then I, you, you froze up a little, but okay. you're back. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Thank you, darling, for the thumbs up. All right, uh, where was I? Um, I got some good looks at a white breasted nut hatch uh, that came really close to me as I balanced on snow mounds at Cory Creek Bridge and I was delighted to see a hairy woodpecker there too. The feeders at the nature center were the big payoff, providing good looks at downy woodpecker, house sparrow, house finch, dark eyed junco and red bellied woodpecker. I saw the banded male house finch again and this time got a photo with his left leg sporting a red band. I have yet to file this report. Each sighting needs to be reported separately, although I will reference my first report in the comments. All right, so here is the Northern Cardinal that I saw on, on the left-hand side there. And then Morning Dove on the left, a Blue Jay on the right at West Creek Reservation. Downy Woodpecker at West Creek Reservation. And you can see she is, oh, where's, my, where's my mouse? Sticking her tongue out right there. Just a little bit. I don't know if that's, if you could see it on your end. But she was, yeah, sticking her tongue out and on the right-hand side, her tongue's back in. House Sparrow at West Creek Reservation. Dark-Eyed Junco. Looking into the sun. And then here's the male house finch. You can see his red band on the left and here is his um, red band here and his yellow band. So I'm thinking it's the same individual, but you know, you never know for sure. It was a week apart. Um, I'll file my report. 
And here's my bird list, notable species. I always highlight in red. These are just notable to me. Um, you might have different birds that, you know, that you would love to see. For me, it was the, the morning doves were wonderful. The red-tailed hawk was the target. A hairy woodpecker, always, you know, happy to see a hairy. And the American goldfinch. And then I, I took a picture there of a white-breasted nuthatch at West Creek Reservation. I think the turkey vulture is pretty notable. Um, oh yeah, you know, considering you know it was January and they they are hanging around all year round now, and that that happens to be a good place to to view them. Excellent. Uh, I think in my report I mentioned that there's two roosting areas that they use, and I think West Creek must be a like a a go between. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. Thank you. All right, next up is Sean Missig. Sean visited the reservation, um, was that four times or did I forget to update that? Yeah, probably four times. All right, um, so he says, West Creek is truly a hidden gem in the heavily residential city of Parma. My first visit to this park was actually a few years ago. My friend and I would ride the mountain bike trails in the back, but other than one Audubon event, I had not walked this park or taken pictures. Little did I know I was in for a real treat. When I arrived at when I arrived on January 2nd, it was cold and there was some light snow falling. This didn't stop the resident birds from being active though. Blue jays, red-bellied woodpeckers, black-capped chickadees, and white-breasted knot hatches were all flying around in the main area and back paths. I even spotted a red-tailed hawk hanging around the stewardship center getting a nice view of the open field. After taking pictures of the hawk, I decided to make my way back towards Skinner's Run Trail and the Jewel Wing Loop. These were the main routes I would use during all my visits. While walking back near the creek, I heard some American crows off in the distance, but never actually got to see them. I also happened to hear a belted kingfisher, which caught me a little off guard. Yes, there was water there and it could support a kingfisher, but the creek seemed rather small and I didn't think there were enough pockets of deep water to hold fish. Kingfisher would prove me wrong though, as I heard it continue to call. I searched high and low for this thing and I could not find it. Uh, so there is a, a picture of the red-tailed hawk um, Sean mentioned at West Creek Reservation on the right-hand side. And a picture of a red-bellied woodpecker on the left and a blue jay on the right at West Creek Reservation by Sean Missig. I continued to walk the Skinner's Run Trail until the end over by Densler Road. On my way back, I saw more of the resident birds, including northern cardinals, downy woodpeckers, and tufted titmice. I also got to hear the kingfisher again, almost as if it were teasing me. I could tell that it was occupying an area in the bend of the creek where none of the paths led to, and I was certainly not going to blaze my own trail back there and potentially damage plants or the ecosystem. Thank you, Sean. I started heading back towards the truck, and I found the red-tailed hawk again. This time it was flying out of the woods and over the stewardship center. I was able to get a few shots before it went across the field and disappeared above the tree line. This was a wonderful way to end the day. So a uh, picture of a downy woodpecker um, at West Creek Reservation on the left-hand side of the screen by Sean Missig. A Northern Cardinal on the left and a red-tailed hawk in flight on the right at West Creek Reservation by Sean Missig. All right, January 8th was a much different day. The temperature was a little better than my visit on January 2nd and the sun was out. I took the same walking path again, but this time I had every intention of finding that kingfisher. As I headed out on the trail, I heard the belted kingfisher in the same spot again, but again, it would not show itself. So I continued onward Making my way deeper into the woods, I really didn't see many signs of life, but it was a nice walk. At one point, I did find a morning dove sitting on a log in the direct sun to try and warm up. Continuing to walk the trail back, continuing to walk the trail back, I stopped on one of the bridges near where the kingfisher was, and I heard it calling yet again. I was trying to formulate a plan to find this bird, and then I saw some people walking the path towards me. Little did they know they were the key to finding this bird because they had just walked through the area. This forced the kingfisher up and out of its hiding spot. I waited a few minutes after they passed me and made my way up towards where the kingfisher was at. 
That's when it happened. I finally found it. It was further away, but this would be my only chance to get a shot. I focused in and held down the shutter button. I was only able to get three shots before the Kingfisher decided photo day was canceled. Uh, so here is a picture of the morning dove um, on the right at West Creek Reservation. And then here are the Kingfisher shots. Uh, Belted Kingfisher perched on uh, that branch and then in flight on the right at West Creek Reservation. Excellent photos. That's a hard bird to catch in the camera too. Uh, another Belta Kingfisher on the left. And then uh, just the, the creek on the right at West Creek Reservation. I call it the West Creek, but I'm not sure if it's actually called the West Creek. I'm, I was assuming because that's the name of the reservation. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I made my way back up to the main field and saw a turkey vulture circling overhead. When I made it closer to the stewardship center, I spotted a red-tailed hawk, but it also spotted me. It quickly flew into a tree with heavy brush around it and did an amazing job camouflaging itself. If I did not see it fly into that spot, I would have likely not seen it at all. After a little while, the hawk came out from hiding and flew off to the other side of the park. On January 15th, the weather turned cold and light snow was falling again. I did not find much during this visit, but did tally more species. The day started with three different pileated woodpeckers flying around deep in the forest. I heard them calling many times from different areas before they all flew off together to the forest by the parking area. Unfortunately, they were all too far away to photograph. The kingfisher I left due to the creek freezing over. Dark-eyed juncos were flying around with many of the sparrows. American tree sparrows were also fairly abundant and making their presence known. I found American robins over by the parking area for the Bluebird Point Trailhead and also spotted a red-tailed hawk perched in a tree above the path as well. It watched me as I took its picture and it didn't seem to have a care in the world. This was the shortest trip that I made to West Creek and I left after photographing the hawk. So the dark-eyed junco that Sean took a picture of is on the left there. And then these are the photos of the red-tailed hawk hiding um, at West Creek Reservation. It's really hard to see here. There, there's its head, here's its body. Um, that's a really, I, I can't believe you got that focused <laughs> behind all that stuff. And then um, another picture of the hawk right here. Michelle, I actually had to manually focus that shot. I, Autofocus would not cooperate. I believe you. That, yeah, autofocus would be really, really tricked by that. So good work on that. Did you put pinpoint on the eye? That's what you probably did, pinpoint uh, focus. For, for my manual focus, I have um, focus peaking. So anything okay. that's in focus shows up in blue in my viewfinder. Ah. So once I okay. saw the blue on the eye, I knew it was good. Excellent. All right, my last trip on January 22nd gave, gave way to a few surprises. The weather was cold and there was no snow. When I made my way towards the Skinner's Run Trail, I spotted a red-tailed hawk by a squirrel nest high up in a tree. It appeared to have caught something and was starting to eat. It then saw me and decided to fly off to enjoy its meal. I watched as it flew to a tree close by on the Greenbrier Trail, so I made my way up there. Thankfully, it didn't go very far back and I was able to get more shots. I was able to get more shots than when it was first at the nest. After about five minutes, I heard a second hawk start to call, and then the original hawk I saw took off with its meal and its talon still. The rest of the Skinner's Run Trail was very quiet, and I made my way back to the open field. As I walked around that path, I spotted a bluebird higher up in a tree. I attempted to take pictures, but it had its back to me and didn't seem to want to be part of picture day, so I continued walking. I stopped shortly after where I saw the bluebird to examine the tree line, and then the and then this day's second surprise happened. That same bluebird flew down and perched on a branch rather close to me. It would appear that it changed its mind about pictures and I was more than happy to do so. This was the perfect way to end my time at West Creek. So there's the beautiful shot of the Eastern Bluebird at West Creek Reservation by Sean Missig. And two shots of uh, the trails through the environment there. Um, and Sean, I don't know if you've, if you know how excellent these photos are, um, if, if you've taken any like photography classes or composition classes, but 
uh, there's a rule in photography that you have leading lines to the center of the image and you have these lines here that go to the center and then this trail that does so that's very visually pleasing and then again this trail leads to the center so and then of course this there's also a rule in photography um I think it's called the rule of two-thirds so you if you make uh, like a tic-tac-toe board out of this picture um having lines across where the tic-tac-toe lines would be um, is also visually pleasing so you've got that nice two-thirds line there and then this line leading to the center just very well done very happy to see those pictures. All right, and then these are just amazing. Um, nice perspective on the bridge. Um, and I think these are both the bridge at Grassroots Gorge Overlook. Uh, you can correct me, Sean, if I'm wrong. It's a little different when I saw it when I went, everything was under snow. <laughs> so let me know if I labeled that in incorrectly. But it seemed like that's, the same. That's that correct, yeah. Okay. That's the uh, bridge on the right that takes you back to the mountain bike trails. Okay, yeah, and that's I stopped right here. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, I can't walk here. This is yeah, I, this is for I stopped there as well, because okay. I, I didn't want to get on the trails back there and mess those up. Yeah. All right. And here's the bird list red tailed hawk is notable belted kingfisher pileated woodpecker and eastern bluebird. Um, and then the turkey vulture I should have highlighted that thank you Nancy for pointing that out on the last list. And a picture of the American tree sparrow at West Creek Reservation by Sean Missig. So thank you, Sean. What a delightful um, four visits you had. All right, next up is Al Rand. He visited the reservation on January 16th. He says, I visited the West Creek Reservation once in January. I used to hike around this location quite frequently before I started birding. It was one of the locations I was fascinated with since there were always hawks perched conspicuously and fairly regular bluebirds. I remember seeing warblers and vireos before I even knew what they were. I performed some very creative web searches in an attempt to figure out what the heck it was I was looking at, but after I started birding, the location seemed to explode and ID what I was seeing became very became way easier thanks to Merlin. He's talking about the Merlin bird ID app. Uh, January 16th was sunny, but very cold, so there was not a whole lot of activity. I started off from the parking lot of the Stewardship Center, saw some American robins and morning doves hanging out in the trees, all poofed up uh, to insulate themselves from the cold. Went down to the bridge over the gorge since I've seen eastern bluebirds there before in winter. No such luck on this day, but the ice formations were neat. And there is a picture that Al took of um, ice formations at West Creek Reservation. And then we have two more um, on this next slide here of the interesting ice formations at West Creek Reservation. From there, I headed back into the woods and followed the trail a little more than halfway to the Densler Road Hill, stopping along the way to admire more ice formations. All the usual winter suspects were present, as was a belted kingfisher. Definitely a nice surprise. Snapped some photos, but they did not come out well. On the way back, I stopped at the clearing that looks up towards the neighborhood, since that area is good for sparrows. Wasn't seeing anything out of the ordinary until I heard a lot of barking. I looked over to see someone jogging with a dog, but the dog was not making any noise. The jogger told me that there was a coyote back there making all the noise. I was kicking myself because I was just over that way and didn't see or hear a single thing. Coyotes are the master of their domain and can disappear in plain sight. Never did it see it. By that time, I was about two hours into my visit and decided to head out. So a picture of American Robin at West Creek Reservation by Al Rand. And he also took a picture of a morning dove there on the left and red-bellied woodpecker. It's a female. Um, we can tell because it doesn't have um, red on, on her forehead um, at West Creek Reservation by Al Rand. Coyotes are becoming more regular suburban denizens, which elicit mixed emotions. They are native to the area and have a role to play in the ecosystem. Coyotes eat the smaller rodents as well as rabbits, which helps keep the populations in check, but are scorned for attacking dogs and carrying disease. Foxes and coyotes absolutely do not get along and a pack of coyotes can wipe out a fox's den in no time. The coyotes in the eastern half of the US are actually coyote, or coyote wolf hybrids, but not the 
Kiwals of today. Before the continent was settled, the only coyote was the smaller ones like the ones seen out west. As the population moved west to avoid people, those that stayed back bred with indigenous eastern wolves. Those wolf populations were quickly wiped out, so having their genes partially exist in today's coyotes could benefit the dwindling wolf populations as science advances. The pictures I include are not from West Creek Reservation, but instead from my office window in Solon. I wrapped up my visit with a check of the feeders and went out with a bang as I tallied about a half dozen house sparrows. Overall, it wasn't my most productive trip to the location, but all things considered, I was happy with what I saw. Sadly, I missed the target species. I managed 18 species in total. Um, so there's a, a picture of coyote in Solon, Ohio by Al Rand at his office. And here's his bird list. Uh, notables include Belta Kingfisher, Harry Woodpecker, and Northern Flicker, always fun to see a flicker. And there's a picture of a squirrel at West Creek Reservation by Al Rand. Nancy, you're up, and I know you always like to take yours. Take it away. All righty. Um, I think somebody, or Michelle, you mentioned that somebody had seen a Northern Harrier on January 1st. Yeah, it was just a, in the eBird report. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, know, I don't know how they could have seen anything because it was foggy. I, you know, I went, really wanted to start out the the year right. So on January 1st, I said, hey, I'm going to do the virtual field trip. And you can see from the photos, it's fog, 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 fog. But it was awesome. It was awesome. It was just really cool. Um, no precipitation. Um, the weather was really mild. So, so again, it was really just, just fun to, to walk around in the, in the fog. I just felt like I was in the fog all the time. So we can go to the next slide. Um, it has some nice all-purpose trails at the park. And uh, I know where a lot of you stopped at the end of that um, the bridge, um, I kind of continued on. I don't think I saw a sign that said you can't go this way. I mean, no, it didn't was... say you couldn't. It said, uh, stay, just walk or stay off the trail if the trail's wet. When I went, it was covered in snow. So I was like, oh, that's wet. Oh, oh. <laughs> hmm. well, I, I trudged on. Oh, Nancy. So, um, yeah, so it has nice all-purpose trails. It has, again, a little bit more rugged trails. Um, I also walked a, a, a driveway or actually, a, yeah, I guess it was a drive. It was an access to one of the communication towers towards the back, back there. Uh, so, but it was, the woods tended to be kind of quiet. It was really the fields uh, on all my trips that seemed pretty, mm, pretty active and of course the feeders too. Um, so I remember West Creek when it was a dump, um, you know, where, where lots of debris, bricks and stuff like that would be dumped. And it's really so nice that the park has taken it over and really made it into an urban, uh, a suburban park uh, for the neighboring folks. So lots and lots of fog that day. No, I didn't see a hawk. If there were any hawks on that, on that January 1st, they were very hard to see. But I did hear an eastern bluebird. So, and you can see from the photo, there's another foggy look at, and that is West Creek right there. And go ahead. Oh, oh, yeah. One of the things on that day, um, as I was crossing that little bridge, what, what's the name of that bridge that, that goes over West Creek right there? Um, I know there was a name to it. But there was a, a, a man and a, a young man and his dad, and they were putting little decorative lights on the bridge. And I said, Oh, gosh, what are you doing? And they were decorating the bridge with lights because the young man was going to propose to his fiance that day and they were going to have the lights on and um i said oh that's going to be so cool in the fog he said yeah i hope it stays foggy so i i, I just thought that was really cute i i know they took the lights off but it was just a, a really sweet moment that uh, they were going to be he was going to propose i wasn't there when he when uh, when the young lady joined them. 
So I don't know how, if she accepted, I wonder. <laughs> Next slide, please. And there's the uh, ravine, very, you would never think that something like that would be in Parma. Um, West Creek just dug through all that shaley stuff and it is very, very fast flowing, but again, fog, fog, fog. Um, so as I mentioned here, the, some of the better birding was done along the all-purpose trail um, and the wetlands, which at that time were not frozen, uh, the, the forests were just really very quiet. And, and this first visit, I, I only got 17 species, um, rather low, but you know, I couldn't pull the birds out of the fog. Um, one of the best areas was along the all-purpose trail where there were American tree sparrows, and then I pished, which means you make this, this sound with, a, with the, which the birds all kind of perk up and they jump out and they hopefully you get a look at them. But the tree sparrows were there, song sparrows, juncos, Carolina wren, a downy woodpecker. Um, so again, all these birds are in, are in this little feeding flock uh, in, that, in that wintry area. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and the kingfisher. Yeah, I had, did have a kingfisher at the end of a rogue trail uh, coming off the muddy jewel wing trail. Um, but most of the other things I found, again, were along the all-purpose trail, including American goldfinch. Next, please. <laughs> Fog. So you can barely see that, that communication tower. I mean, it once you looked up maybe 150, 200 feet, it just disappeared. It just was so fun. Fog. Next. All righty, so I went out a second time on January 8th. Uh, we had a little bit of snow um, and it was cold, um, not the deep, deep snow, but uh, bundling up was good. Um, I took the trail, again, all-purpose trail, uh, did not walk in the wetland area because by that time it was frozen and slippery. Um, took the jewel wing trail and then another trail marked with blue arrows, and I don't know what the name of that trail uh, was. Um, and again, most of the, the blue trail or blue marked trail went through the forest area, which, like I said, was, was fairly quiet. Um, again, crossing that bridge over West Creek, there was some bird activity. I pished again and again found a similar mixed flock of, again, juncos, the American tree sparrow, morning dove, a song sparrow, downy woodpecker, and Carolina wren. So I'm guessing that those were a lot of the same birds that I saw the first trip. Um, and then uh, I saw a red-tailed hawk which is, was one of the target species on um, one of the communication tower structures. Uh, and I watched it and it bent over and it had its, in its talons a lot of grass. So it must have caught something. And when it caught the vole or whatever, it had also picked up a lot of vegetation. And it kind of picked through the grass and then ate whatever it caught. So I'm guessing it, it was probably a meadow vole. And a second red-tailed hawk flew over shortly after it finished eating. So apparently there's a pair that hangs around there. And I'm, this I think is West Creek again with a little dusting of snow. You can see it's a little bit frozen over. Next slide. And I walked down to the creek a little bit so I could get some photos of some raccoon footprints along the edge of the creek. And um, I also did, I think I got another photograph of some footprints. I don't know if, if Michelle put them in there in another slide, but um, yeah, they're next. walked through the, the woods. Next slide. Came, what's that? On the next slide. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then I came back through uh, the open area again around where the communication towers are. That's where the all-purpose trail is. Two turkey vultures. And I thought, again, that was pretty good. And um, 
as I mentioned, there's a, a roosting area in near Tri-C Western Campus uh, at a church, a Holy Family Church, where a lot of turkey vultures roost. And then uh, some of them, I think, go into Brecksville. So again, as the turkey vultures floats, that's probably like the one of the main routes that they take uh, over West Creek. The third trip I took, uh, January th uh, 21st, um, well, it was very cold. And of course, we had had all the snow. So it was really hard walking in some places. The all-purpose trail was, was good because it had been plowed or, or scraped. Uh, but you know, once you got off the all-purpose trail onto the Jewel Wing Trail, and I think, Michelle, you had had some photos of the Jewel Wing Trail. I think those were my footprints. <laughs> stomping through there. Um, yeah, not too many people had gone off uh, onto the uh, trails that had not been plowed. It was tough walking. I mean, you got a good workout. Um, in the woodland areas, a little on the, the slower side, but I was able to get a, a few species. How about the next slide, please? Oh, there's the uh, squirrel tracks that I had gotten on the, along the Jewel Wing Trail. And the, is that the creek itself? I think it is. How about the next? Yeah, this was my third trip. And you can see there's a much more snow. Michelle, if you can go back a couple now, everybody take a look at that photo, okay? And then go back to the next one. There and that was no no go back back and back again and back again there so that no nope, right there that was the same vantage point with little less snow so now if we go forward a couple of slides there there's it, it a little bit deeper so like I said that was after that. Uh, Martin Luther King Day uh, snowfall and, and again, trudging through. But morning doves, blue jays, cardinals, I mean, you've got a lot of the, the typical uh, suburban birds, but I did not get a single American tree sparrow that day. Where did they go? I don't know. Um, pileated woodpecker, that was nice. I, I, caught that and I wanted to get a photo of it because I was that close. I mean, I was really close, but somebody else walked up by me and scared it away. Rats. So blue jays, red-bellied woodpeckers, nuthatches, um, and just, just really, again, nice woodland birds. Uh, when I did take a little walk on the, uh, the blue arrow trail, I did stop and, and do some fishing there as well, with, again, which hopefully would have attracted some birds. And it was really very good. So uh, chickadee, titmouse, um, red-bellied woodpecker, chickadees, uh, nuthatch, goldfinch, bluebirds, hairy woodpeckers. Again, all these birds were just coming out of the wood work. How about out of the woods? And, uh, and again, it was just really fun. I was hoping, I was just hoping that maybe I would get me a golden crown kinglet or maybe a brown creeper that would have been in this mixed flock, but nope, didn't get any of those. So, but it was nice. And as I continued on that blue arrow trail, um, I did see something. I thought somebody's dog was running loose on the hillside, but nope, it was a coyote. And I was not that close and I had stopped and I put my binoculars up to watch this coyote and it was coming down a hillside, went behind a, a kind of a turned over tree, a tree that had fallen over and there were roots sticking up. And that coyote, it just got a bead on me. I'm like, how did that animal know I was there when I was stopped dead still and I was leaning up against the tree, but it looked directly at me, or so I thought. So it was very nice to see that. Next slide. 
And I know I just took photos with my little phone camera, so it's hard to see what that is in the tree, but it is a cardinal. Um, so I did walk back from the Woodland Trail and did stop at, uh, or did walk around the, uh, the all-purpose trail around the field. Um, I almost walked beneath a red-tailed hawk that was just absolutely perched there and again, wanted to get a photo of it, but as soon as I picked up my phone, guess what? It flew away, but it flew to one of the communication towers, then the second red tail came by. And as I was watching them float around, um, two red-shouldered hawks were floating in the distance. Uh, so that was really nice. We got uh, two species of hawk, the red tail and the red shoulder. Uh, Canada geese went by. I think that was the only waterfowl I had seen on my three visits. And uh, then as I got closer to the watershed stewardship center, um, that I knew they had the bird feeders, so I stopped and checked out some of the birds there. Juncos, house finch, song sparrow. I didn't see any house finches with bands on their legs, though, so hmm, that was interesting. Um, and, oh yeah, rock pigeons, a flock of rock pigeons flew over before I got into my car. So how about that? 20 species, pretty darn good for, for that day. And that is a cardinal in a hawthorn tree. Are there any more photos? Oh yeah, I thought this one was kind of fun. The teasel plants that kind of curled around. I just thought that was a kind of a fun, uh, design that that plant had made. So there's my list. A lot of the same things that other people had seen too and included a couple of the target species. Excellent. Thank you very much, Nancy. Yeah. All right, uh, the last uh, person who went, Lisa Gerbig, visited the reservation on January 30th. She says, I finally made it to West Creek Reservation on January 30th. I spent almost two hours walking the snow-covered trails. I saw many of our usual winter birds. The highlight of my trip was a red-tailed hawk. A maintenance worker was plowing the path and a hawk flew up onto one of the wires. After a few minutes, it took off into the woods. Luckily, the hawk didn't go in too far and I had a clear view of its beautiful rusty colored tail. I ended my trip near the feeders by the nature center where I watched many birds filling up on a free meal. And so there's a gorgeous picture of a red-tailed hawk at West Creek Reservation by Lisa Gerbic. She also took a picture of a song sparrow there on the left and dark-eyed junco on the right at West Creek Reservation. And then finally, a downy woodpecker at West Creek Reservation. And here's her bird list. Uh, she had 14 species. Notables include the red-tailed hawk, a white-breasted nuthatch, always fun to see, and American goldfinch. Um, so those were pretty, too, on my visit. So, And then that's it. A thank you to Sean Missig, Al Rand, Nancy Howell, and Lisa Gerbic for visiting the reservation. And a huge thank you to Cleveland Metro Parks for West Creek Reservation. A West Creek Reservation is located at 2277 West Ridgewood Drive in Parma. Uh, I put that right in my GPS. It, it took me there, no problems. Uh, so if you want to visit, just uh, make sure you have a park map so you know where you want to park. There are a couple of different parking lots. Um, and it's, it's just a wonderful trip. Um, please visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. This month, the month of February, we are uh, exploring the Rocky River Reservation. I decided not to go too far away from my home <laughs> for February. Um, and I believe, oh, what are the target species? I don't remember what the target species, I haven't made my trip yet. I think I picked maybe the Cardinal and the Titmouse, but it could, could be something else. Sean, have you made it out yet? Do you remember? I have made it out. I'm actually currently looking it up on the website to see. Oh, thank you. <laughs> if I can. It's, I wrote it. I don't remember. I think it was yeah. the Cardinal at Mouse. <laughs> yeah, I made it out too, and I don't remember what the target <laughs> species were. Uh, I'm not seeing anything on the website. For oh, you February. know what? Our website probably isn't updated yet, but I think those are the target species. Um, we send out an email every, every week. 
and we should have it in there. Um, but yeah, so with that, I would like to open it up for discussion, comments or questions. So anyone have anything they want to say, go ahead and unmute or use the chat. Or chat me if you can't unmute and I'll uh, invite you to unmute. I just wanted to say thank you for your compliments. I appreciate that on the, the landscape stuff that I did. Yeah. If I remember correctly, those photos were actually taken with my phone and not wow. my actual camera. Um, and I have not taken any courses. I just sort of, but I, I always have been very uh, composition heavy when taking photos. And I always focus more on the composition than anything else, unless it happens to be like a, a bird in flight or something moving. Um, right. So yeah. I, I do appreciate that though. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. They're excellent. So Sean, you must have like a natural eye for, you know, what to look for. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with that. Um, my, <laughs> my grandfather, when he was alive, he was a photographer. Um, nothing hardcore or anything you know he just had a couple of nice cameras and he would always go on vacation with my grandma and I've got tons of slides in my basement of photos that he's taken but I never had an interest in it um, other than seeing the photos so he never actually taught me anything about it but I'm thinking it kind of passed its way down through the generations and I'm okay with that. Excellent and I did look it up Tufted Titmouse and Northern Cardinal for this month so yeah, Lisa's photo here of the of the red-tailed hawk. I mean, that is like classic. Well, not not only the red tail, but that mm -hmm. that the striping of white that is almost like a V pattern on the back. Yeah, that's an excellent that shot. Nice. Yeah, I'm curious about Indeed. those banded. I'm curious about those banded house finch. Um, if those just had the colored bands on it. That must be something locally done. Um, otherwise, they would have the fish and wildlife uh, aluminum band on the leg too. Yeah, there. I didn't see any aluminum. Yeah, that's um, that's unusual. Hmm. Yeah, but I'll have to file my second report, and hopefully that'll help them. Now, it, sometimes it takes a while if I even hear back. I've I've submitted bands up. Uh, photos of banded birds before. Um, and I just got a reply um, for a, a bird that I reported over a year ago. <laughs> so sometimes it takes a while for them to get on the case and figure out. And, and the, the reply I got back was that it was, um, there wasn't enough information. Like it was an aluminum band um, and they're just like, it couldn't make even, even it, it just couldn't make out some of the the numbers or the letters or whatever so it wasn't useful unfortunately but you know still do it I, I i still submit the reports even if i can't make out all the all the numbers because you never know what might be useful to them they might be able to figure it out anything else Well, thank you. Thank you, Anne-Marie, and hello <laughs> for joining us. And um, thank you, Sean and Nancy as well. And I hope to see you all next month for this. Have a good evening.